Hello, this is Father Rich Tui from Our Lady of Peace Parish in Erie, Pennsylvania, uh, continuing our walk through the windows of OLP Church. I'm standing here before our next window, which I like to call the church window, or it could be called the Holy Spirit window. And remember now we're on the west side of the main sanctuary window, so we've moved from the Old Testament to the New Testament. We're reminded with this window that the mission of Jesus Christ was, was, uh, was not complete, even with the completion of the events that we're going to be celebrating soon with the great Triduum and the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus, that that was not the end of his mission. And the reality that until he would establish his mystical body here on earth, the church, uh, that, that could continue his mission, that then his mission would be complete. And so we'll see the symbols here on the church window. The very top was the, the bird and, the, um, and the, the flames of fire, kind of like this bird descending down that is like a flame. And so we see the combination of two classic symbols of the Holy Spirit. Another uh, argument could be made that this is a Holy Spirit window. Um, and we see that uh, reminding us of two significant moments when the Spirit was manifested in those symbols. One with the dove, remember, that descended upon Jesus at his baptism, uh, re reinforcing that he was the anointed one. And then, of course, the fire, uh, reminding us of the great birthday of the church, that, that feast of Pentecost, that uh, 50 days after the resurrection, when Jesus gave birth to the church. And we, we know that then the, his followers who had been commissioned to bring the truth of the gospel to the world, um, that they didn't have the courage and the strength to do that until they had been completely um, renewed and given new life and strength in the Holy Spirit at that Pentecost. So that birthday of the church, the, uh, the flames representing those flames of fire as they, we uh, heard them descending upon the apostles' head at that great moment of Pentecost. Um, and I would m mention that we have a great picture of Pentecost out in our main office hallway. Um, so I encourage you to check that out. And it certainly reinforces this window as well. And so now that the, the church is established, we see another image here of the house on, uh, on the rock. And so a couple different ways that that imagery works for us. First of all, we remember um, the Jesus in Matthew 7 would talk about if we, those who hear his words and act upon them are like the wise men whose house is built on rock. And so Jesus is the ultimate rock on which this house of the church is built. But then we also know he used that language in Matthew 16 saying, Peter, you are rock and on, and on this rock, I will build my church. And so um, re reinforcing that, I, that unique place of the Pope, Peter being the first Pope, being the rock that would be the establishment um, that now the papacy, what a source of strength it is for us and unity in our church, in, in, in our Roman Catholic faith. So, um, so that's being reinforced. So Jesus is the rock, but then Peter's the rock, and then certainly the church is our rock and, and in our foundation um, throughout our lives of faith. And then beyond that, we actually see from that church, there are different manifestations of the Spirit um, that God calls all of us to live out in the mission of the church. And so we heard in the, the wisdom window the some of the things associated with the Holy Spirit, the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit taken from Isaiah um, that are sometimes categorized when we talk about the Spirit. We many times talk about the fruits of the Holy Spirit found in Galatians, Paul's letter to the Galatians, um, that are an indication of we're living in the Spirit, things like love and peace and joy and gentleness. And then, but also the charisms of the Holy Spirit, which we don't hear as much about. And that's what the other symbols in our window uh, look at. So I'm going to read to you from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 and following. Paul is using that great image of the church being the body of Christ. In many parts, but one body. And at one point he says, to each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. To one is given through the Spirit, the expression of wisdom. To another, the expression of knowledge according to the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one spirit, to another mighty deeds or miracles, to another prophecy, to another discernment of spirits, to another variety of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. But one and the same spirit produces all of these, distributing them individually to each person as he wishes. And so we see the rest of the symbols from the rock comes water, reminding us of the miracle, the water coming from the rock, 
um, and those mighty deeds that are mentioned by Paul. We have the cross that represents faith, as he mentioned to some people given the, the spirit of faith. And then the symbols that I was least aware of, the cane representing the lame who are healed and the hand over the ear representing Jesus helping healing and helping people to hear. So these gifts of healing. Um, so the challenge we all have is then, what are the gifts that we've been given for the mission of Jesus Christ in the church? And to humbly pray about that, maybe this time of um, isolation is a time to re-go to our discernment of our own gifts. What has God blessed me with and how I can help with the mission of the church? The song that we uh, recommend today is by Matt Maher. He's my favorite Christian musician. He's actually Catholic. And, um, and I'm, I'm a little disappointed it took me this long to get to him. But he has a song called The Spirit and the Bride. And because this window represents the Holy Spirit giving birth to the church, which is very often called the Bride of Christ, um, I'd encourage you to listen to that song by Matt Ha Maher, The Spirit and the Bride, and let that inspire you to be open to the Spirit and to be that part in the church, the bride that we're called to be. Thank you for tuning in. God bless you.